I want to talk about recommended lenses for the Canon 70D and other Canon crop sensor cameras like the T5i, T6i, whenever it comes out. Now I really see two different audiences for this video. There are those folks who have their camera, have bought it with the kit lens, and are now looking for the next lens to upgrade to, um, or the next lens to purchase, not necessarily an upgrade. And there are those folks who haven't bought yet and are trying to figure out whether or not they should buy body separate and a better lens, I did put that in quote on purpose, um, or whether or not they should buy the camera with the kit. Let me adjust those folks first. The answer is yes. Yes, you should go ahead and buy the kit lens. Maybe you heard from a friend uh, who dabbles in photography, uh, or maybe you heard from an older professional photographer, or you read on the internet, very dangerous thing to do, read on the internet, that the kit lens is crap or bad or low quality. And you know, in various times during DSLR history, that fact has been true. But right now, these Canon kit lenses, the 18-55 STM and the 18-135 STM, are very good lenses and are very good values when purchased with the camera. They really don't add a whole lot to the purchase price. And you have to spend a good bit more to get a good bit more quality lens. And the value really works well and lets you kind of see, it's a, it's a kind of gentle introduction to the DSLR photography um, and gives you kind of a useful range and lets you see what's important to you and then you can upgrade um, or add on lenses. So let's talk about though the different lenses that I think are work really well for the Canon 70D and other crop sensor cameras. And the first place we should start with is primes. So there are two primes in particular that I want to recommend for the Canon 70D. You have the Canon 51.4. This is a really nice lens. The reason why I'm starting off with primes is because many, many folks come to me and say, I got a DSLR. How do I take those shallow depth of field photos? Now you can do that with the kit lens. All right, now I have the 18 to 135 on here. I have a video that shows you how you can take a picture with a nice background blur using the kit lens. With a prime lens, you have these really wide maximum apertures that allow you to get very shallow depth of field. If any of this is sounding like foreign language to you, link, links down below to lots more information. Of course, just leave a comment. I'm happy to answer questions. Remember, if you have a question about this, other people do too. Don't be shy to ask. But your prime lenses, your 51.4, that 1.4 is its maximum aperture. That is a really wide maximum aperture. It allows you to have really shallow depth of field. It also allows you to let in a lot of light in lower light situations. So there are a lot of things that folks are looking for when they move up to DSLRs. One is that shallow depth of field. Another is better low light pictures. A prime lens is the easiest and cheapest way to get there. The downside, there's no zooming. You zoom with your feet. I have a separate video where I talk a little bit more in detail about prime lenses. So I'm not going to say a whole lot more, but the 51.4 is an excellent value. And the other option that I think you should consider, um, you shouldn't, you don't need both, uh, but the 40 f2.8. This is a newer lens. I love it because it's so dang small. It's tiny. Uh, it doesn't let in as much light, uh, but optically it is just as sharp and it is a very good lens. It's also a little bit wider, so you might find that focal length uh, to be a little bit more versatile. The 50, if you live inside a normal size house, you may find yourself backing up against the walls in some rooms to get larger shots. If you want kind of tight head shots, things like that, it is spectacular and it is very, very sharp for the money. Now, let's talk about lenses that you could replace the kit lens with and why. So kind of your walk around general lenses. All right, first up, this has been my favorite pick for quite some time now. I have it right here. It is the Tamron 28 to 75. Um, why do I love this lens? It is a constant aperture f2.8 over the range, 28 to 75, and it's very sharp and it's affordable coming in at about $500. Now, some of you might say, well, that doesn't sound so affordable. I only paid a little bit more than 500 for my camera if you're coming from a T5i, T4i. Well, you have to pay to get good lenses and $500 for the quality you get here and that constant aperture of f2.8 is very good. The Aboka you get out at 50 to 75 at f2.8 is really, really nice. And so this is a good lens. The only thing it doesn't have that some of you might want is optical image stabilization. Uh, there is a lens from Sigma. They're 18 to 50 f2.8 that does have image stabilization built in. 
Remember, image stabilization doesn't help with your moving subjects. It really only kind of helps you if you're looking for a walk around in lower light where you can't have a tripod um, or you want a little bit more flexibility than having a tripod. So something like the Sigma for about a hundred more bucks might be something you can consider. There are actually a lot of lenses in this category and there are some others that I've talked about previously. The Sigma 17 to 70 is good. It doesn't give you a constant f2.8. And I'm rattling off a lot of lenses here. The links to all of these are down below. Uh, and then there is right now, if we throw budget out the window, uh, Sigma 18 to 35. It's a short range, but it's a constant f1.8. I have a video that talks about that. That is a fantastic lens. It is the sharpest lens that you can put on your APS-C sensor right now. Uh, and that's just great. But you pay for it. You pay about eight, nine hundred dollars I think it's sitting right about $800 right now. So let's move up. You want to get a little closer to the action, take pictures of your kids and their sporting events, maybe do a little bit of wildlife photography. I, I say a little bit because you really can't do serious wildlife photography with the next couple of telephoto lenses I'm going to talk about, but you can get a little bit closer. So let's talk about some telephoto lenses. All right, so the first one I want to recommend for telephoto lenses is the 55 to 250 STM. This is the newest refreshed version. There's now three versions of the 55 to 250, the original, the two, and now the, doesn't say two, because they added STM on. It offers that silent, smooth autofocus uh, that's really nice for shooting video. I didn't mention that at the beginning, but the kit lenses, the 18 to 55, the 18 to 135 STM, if you plan to do any kind of video, it is important uh, that you get that extra smooth and silent is the most important part, uh, autofocusing during video. So that's a reason why uh, you might want to consider those over some of the other lenses. Um, but in my tests, I have review of the 55 to 250. I found it to be very good. And if you buy it as a bundle deal with the camera, there's almost always that deal going on on Amazon. Link down below to that as well. Uh, you get it for less than 200 bucks. And that's a pretty serious zoom lens um, at a really budget price. There's nothing better in that price point. Uh, even bought without that deal, it's still a good enough value that I'm recommending it. The next lens up, um, is not this one, but it's related to this one. Uh, it's a good bit more, but it's still affordable and it is still a good value. It's the 70 to 200 F4 from Canon. It's their L class series. It's their professional level lenses, weather sealed, incredibly incredible colors and contrast right out of that, and a constant F4 aperture across the range. And you think, well, F4 doesn't sound like a really great range, especially the 55 to 250. I think even starts. Um, at, well, it starts at F4 actually. Uh, so, but out towards 200, F4 can give you a beautiful soft bokeh background and it's a pretty versatile lens. You might think it's not, but portraits, uh, family, uh, children in sporting events or on stage performances, um, and then of course, as I said, a little bit of wildlife. And you can always do a little bit of cropping to get a little bit closer. So these were just a couple of recommendations across a couple of categories. We didn't touch on macro. I have thoughts on those and I'll write them up and leave them at the blog post down below. Uh, wide angle, just say this about wide angle and I've said this before, that is one of those very common categories that many people think they want, but then when they get wide angle shots, they realize that they're very messy and they're hard to compose a really nice wide angle shot. 18 millimeters on a crop sensor camera uh, is actually quite wide and probably as wide as many people need to go. But there are options for going wider and I have recommended lists down below. And did I say macro as well? I did. And so I have recommendations down below for those as well. Do you still wonder what is the best lens for you and you don't feel like it was answered in this video? Well, certainly leave a comment down below or, or better, come over to Facebook, give the page a like, Tell me what type of photography you are interested in, what lenses you have now, what your budget is, and I can recommend a few options to you. I'd be happy to do that. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Subscribing is quite powerful and it's a very easy way to support my work. Thanks so much for watching.